Your investigation of hunting in Malta continues, and the passion that the Maltese hunters have for this ancient activity, rich in tradition. Malta is the smallest country in the European Union, with only 316 square surface kilometers, and is situated in the southern part of Europe, as are Italy, Spain, and Portugal. We need to preserve and defend our traditions and maintain our culture. In this episode, we'll talk with the FKNK, the Federation for Hunting and Conservation, Malta, about a particular hunting activity, that is, live bird capturing, better known as bird trapping. But first, let's enjoy two minutes of Malta. It's well worth it. Maltese hunters are divided into two large families, hunters and trappers. Malta doesn't have indigenous wild game, therefore everything depends upon migration. Throughout the course of this episode, we'll analyze bird trapping. This activity is practiced with a permit, a special permit through the European Commission that allows Malta and other countries, such as Spain, Austria, and in some cases Italy, to trap live birds with nets. For example, we know that in Italy, trapping equipment are few and must be authorized by the ISPRA. One must take a course and the captured birds can only be used for scientific and research purposes. They are weighed, measured, a ring is placed on one of the legs, and then they're released. Some other few birds that are captured must be consigned to the province, which then, without cost, are given back to the hunters for use as live decoys. There's a similar permit in Malta, where there's an enormous trapping tradition. And after five years, this year actually, the Maltese government has allowed the possibility of recapturing finches. Seven types of finches are considered trap worthy. But we'll talk about and analyze these details later on in the episode. Now, let's discover what these Maltese trappers do as well as their passion and love for this very particular hunting activity. Let's go. We're here with Lino Farrugia, and first of all, we thank him for the invite. Lino is the CEO of the FKNK, the Federation for Hunting and Conservation, Malta. Lino, we'd like to better understand the world of trappers. We'd especially like to dedicate this episode to them. Could you tell me about trapping? I know it's a great tradition here in Malta. Yes, thank you and welcome again to Malta. As, uh, as you said, as you correctly said, um, live bird capturing and live finch capturing is a long-standing tradition even before hunting because of the invention of gunpowder. I have to state initially that um, uh, live finch capturing means that the birds that we catch with the nets 
are kept alive. They are never killed or anything for, for consumption. They are kept alive. They are kept alive as, as for future live decoys. They are kept alive for some um, captive breeding and they are kept alive for, for the enjoyment of their song. But it is, it is a, very, a very strong and passion and tradition of Maltese uh, trappers. Obviously, we must speak with you about the, let's say, political situation of hunting in Malta. We know that there have been problems with trapping and that you must have a permit. Could you better explain the situation? Yeah, um, when we joined the European Union, um, uh, it was agreed that there would be a five-year transmission transition period so that um, life finch capturing would be gradually replaced by some other uh, some other activity um, uh, they tried all sorts of activities like captive breeding um, uh, um, uh, keeping keeping of birds in captivity but um, uh, eventually it, it resulted and it is very clear that nothing can replace there is no other satisfactory alternative solution for life finch capturing and so the only way forward was for Malta to apply a derogation to to allow f life finch capturing because that was the only satisfactory solution for the trappers of Malta otherwise there is no other I mean uh, just giving an example like um, captive breeding it's like asking a fisherman to to catch the fish instead of going to catch the fish to go home, get an aquarium, and look at the fish in the aquarium. It is not the same. There is no other alternative. The only alternative, there, the only possibility is to trap birds. And we are doing this now with the application of a derogation, a very um, limited application of a derogation compared to what we used to do, but at least we are able to trap the finches again. In a few words, could you tell me what the permit entails? How can you trap birds in Malta in this period, and what are the limits? Well, um, there is a very short season when compared to <coughs> what it originally was. We, we have a bag limit of only 10 finches um, amongst the seven finch species that we are allowed to trap. Um, obviously, there's a national bag limit, and if that is reached, the season for that bird will be closed. There are various restrictions. There are high, um, expensive license fees that have to be paid for, for, for that. There are several restrictions. It is strictly, very strictly controlled. For example, the birds that we have to use as, as live decoys, they have to be closed ringed. And then, again, the birds we catch you have to put on a ring on them, you have to send, uh, you have to call the authorities and report the bird and before you leave you have to, to, to include it on the, on the, on the carnet de chasse. I mean, these are just a few of the restrictions, but there are even more, but the application of the derogation, we are, want to make sure that the derogation is applied in a correct manner so that we can apply it for years to come and not just one time. Well, let's hope that with all these limitations, with all these restrictions in Malta, that this important tradition is allowed to continue. Now let's enjoy this episode. We're going to the capture stations to see what happens. See you in a bit. We're here at the trapping station of Raymond Cordina. Remember that here in Malta, every trapper can have two stations at the most that are registered by law. So, first question, what is the first thing you do in the morning when you arrive at a trapping station like this one? What are the preparatory activities, Raymond? Very early in the morning when it's almost still dark, um, I come to, this, to the trapping site with my birds 
and the nests I leave here, but they are, and uh, the trigger is removed, so they, they cannot be activated. So I activate them, and then I adjust the nets to make sure that there is nothing which can snag their operation. And very early in the morning, I will bring out uh, a few decoys, put them very near the nets, and uh, operate in that way till, till about 7.30, quarter to 8. Then at, at that time, when the early morning movement of birds has stopped, I bring out the other decoys and distribute them a bit further away from the nets. And it is done in a certain way. The way is that they are, they are um, positioned uh, against, the, not against the wind, in the direction of the wind. Because the, the birds, the birds always land in the trapping site into the wind. So they approach the, the trapping site into the wind and they hear these decoys which are, which are singing and attracting them. And they, they lose their altitude and slowly the idea is that they come into the, the trapping site. So how many birds do you actually bring every day that you use as live decoys? Yes, um, the, the law states that a maximum of uh, 21 decoys can be used on any trapping site by, by one licensed trapper. And that includes also the birds which are uh, on braces and they are used to, to flutter and attract the, uh, the birds when they are approaching in the final stages. Whenever you capture the birds, let's remember that here in Malta, the permit allows the capture of seven different finch species. Yes, seven, seven types of finches, yes. But the, the, the absolute, uh, the, the limit, the back limit is 10 birds, 10 birds for uh... One last consideration. You must know that Raymond is an aeronautics engineer and has worked his whole life at Air Malta. Luckily, he has recently gone into retirement and can dedicate his time entirely to this passion. In fact, he comes here to his trapping site every day in order to capture a bird or two. However, he had the possibility to travel the world for free, but being that they take great care of the birds they capture, because we know that they don't eat the birds they capture, but keep them alive in captivity. It's a, it's a blasphemy for us to say <laughs> that you uh, eat a finch. <laughs> Something, um, um, I mean, I... <laughs> they take them, they ring them, and place them in aviaries and care for them throughout the year. They enjoy the presence of these birds that they capture. Obviously, the birds need daily care, and therefore it's because of this reason that Raymond has never taken advantage of his possibility to travel the world for free. And I imagine that your wife would not be very happy about she this. She is not happy at all. I mean... <laughs> We've come to the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries to speak with Minister Roderick Galdes in order to ask him after five years. The Maltese government has applied permits that allow trappers to capture seven different kinds of finches. But after five years, since the permits had been stopped, what is the current state of affairs? One has to consider that in Malta, uh, trapping um, is a deeply uh, rooted uh, social activity. And um, throughout the years, I think uh, it's now a tradition that uh, goes by for, for a number of years. And we have uh, quite a number of trappers that practice uh, this hobby, around, around 4,000 uh, to 5,000 trappers in Malta. So basically, the government carried out a lot of studies, a lot of uh, legal and uh, technical uh, studies to justify this derogation. We had discussions with the European Union, although um, the European Union also told us that uh, we can apply a derogation. However, it's contesting the way how the derogation is going to be applied. But uh, since there is no alternative to trapping, 
uh, we had decided to, to go on with, with uh, derogation, uh, justified with uh, a lot of controls, um, with uh, derogation that is uh, controlled and strictly supervised by the enforcement of the wild bears regulations and the administrative law enforcement in Malta. The Commission sent a letter to Malta asking for explanations and, in some way, asks Malta not to allow the capture of finches. How will the government respond to this? No, the Maltese government is ready to defend the right of the Maltese trappers to have the activity of trapping under this derogation and continue the, the, this hobby as well. Uh, however, we are, we are uh, doing our utmost to control and enforce the derogation uh, so that, that the activity takes place with, uh, in a controlled manner. Thank you very much and good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. We've moved to another trapping station. We're here with David Brifa, who is one of the members of the FKNK Council. And in my hand is a cage with a live decoy, a beautiful example of a male hawfinch, because this station, David told me, is particularly adapted for the capture of hawfinches. Why does this station have a greater attraction for these kinds of birds, David? This place is very good for these birds, for the hawfinch and for the siskins, because it is surrounded by trees. If you want to catch linnets and green finches and gold finches, you need more open space. But this place is dedicated to these, these two birds. That's why I come early in the morning for these birds, because they pass um, in the early of, of, of the morning. Um, I come here around five o'clock in the morning to prepare everything. And when I go, I have to take everything ba back home. <laughs> so, the passion for trapping requires an awful lot of patience. The season has been open for a week now, You've come every day, so how many birds have you captured up to now? I've been coming here from the first day of the open season, which is 20th October. Today is the, is the uh, 25th, the fifth day. I did not catch anything. He hasn't caught anything yet. But this doesn't bother David or the other trappers in Malta, because the important thing is and we repeat again, to have the possibility of being here at the capture station with this splendid view which we can see behind us, with your own birds and enjoy the day. This is the trapper's happiness. I don't, um, I come every day, usually I come early in the morning. The, 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 the most important thing is I come legally. Yes. When I cannot come, I will be very sad. Yes. Because if I come and, and I will be here, even if I don't see nothing and I don't catch nothing, important thing is I'm here listening to my birds, which is, uh, uh, will be out. And when the time comes, I go <laughs> back home. Okay. Perfect. Perfecto. Thanks, David. We are now on Gozo, the other island that makes up the Malta archipelago. Remember, there are Malta, Gozo and Comino, which is practically an uninhabited rock with few people. We're at one of the most beautiful trapping stations that I've ever seen. The owner is Paolo Grec, to whom I'd like to ask, how do you build a trapping station like this one? Does it take only a few hours or do you need the love and passion all year round? It's a thing that is done all year round. My father takes care of the birds and practically I work so I don't have that time. My, my father is retired so he come, him and my friend, 
give water to the plants so they grow. This year is not that good because we had strong winds from northwest and practically they destroyed all, all the flowers, all, all the seeds we had. But fortunately we gathered some, some more herbs during the summer. We make them in the dark so they keep their seeds inside and we get them out every three days. So they attract mainly the, the linnets. It attracts the birds. The, the bird knows that when he goes down, he can find what the food what he wants. And then we, obviously we catch it with, with the nets. Um, you cannot make nets all over the island. The nets has to be in a certain point. These nets were practically, we are here for almost 20, 22 years or 25 years, something like that. That other one over there, there is another one that has been there for 60 years. But these are the best nets we have for, 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 for linnets mainly. So, I see a green strip in the middle of a dry piece of land. How did you make this green strip, which, I imagine, attracts birds because the capture of birds is a hunting activity and it is a very difficult practice? In all of this enormous space, birds have to decide to land here in order to allow them to close their nets and therefore the station has to be extremely attractive in order to convince migratory birds to stop for only a few minutes, to then proceed towards Africa. I would think that this is very difficult, right, Paolo? Um, and the place has to be, we, we call it where the water comes down, like, like when you have a river. So that field up there, when it rains, it, all the water gathers up there and comes down from in front of the, of the traps. And practically the first train, the field is not plowed. So all the seeds come down to this field. And this is a rocky field. So as you see, the seeds stays in the rocks. So the birds, that's where they go to find the, the seeds that they want to eat. And when the seeds are wet, they are soft, soft enough to be eaten by the birds mainly. And I keep it for, for next year, you know, for, the, for calling. So, they've captured a female now. But they don't want to keep her because they prefer a male. So we'll just let her go. We'll see you next year. What part of the island are we now? So we are in the, the south, the south part of Gozo. Practically we are in the last place to see the birds. The birds enter all from, from Europe, from over Italy, Sicily, come from the north of Gozo and we are the, the last. So they cross the island and this is the final part because behind us there is still the sea and after that they take up the flight to Africa. Therefore, it is the last stop they make before taking the long trip towards Africa. Yes, practically they stop for a few minutes, for a few seconds, and they keep going their voyage to, to Africa mainly. How passionate do you have to be to be a trapper? I always say it's a genetic thing, like a dog. <laughs> when you have a hunting dog, <laughs> it never has seen a quail or something, it points. So my father was a trapper, my grandfather was a trapper, my grand-grandfather was a trapper, and I grew up in a trap, so... Is your brother a trapper as well? Yes, my brother is a trapper too, but he traps on the other side. Pay attention, because here lies the true soul of the hunter. 
he and his brother are two great trappers that come from the same generation of trappers. They do everything together. They work together. They're always together. But in hunting and trapping, they go separately, each one with his own technique, and at the end, they keep score. Everyone has his own methods. That how, that's how it works. We work with each other in tourism, but now we stop for two months or two months and a half just to trap birds. And we'll see in the end who captures the most. See, always my brother. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm convinced that in the end, you'll have an even score, because the law allows a bag limit of 10 birds each season. So you can capture 10, and your brother can also capture 10. But we count even the females. So, so the females we release. So me and my brother, we count the females. All. Exactly. The males you'll keep will be even, whereas all those you let go, you'll keep score at the end. Okay. This is also a female finch which they let go because they prefer to keep the males in order to ring them, which obviously makes up their seasonal quota. With the nets, there is the possibility to release the birds that aren't or won't be used and won't be kept. It's biting me because it is absolutely untamed. So we wish you a safe trip and we'll see you next year. Mwah. Bye. We've finally captured a male linnet, which we'll keep and not release. He inserts the ring that distinguishes him onto the left leg of the bird. Look, you see? Here is an identification number. Obviously, this ring can't be removed. And this is captured. Wonderful. Let's put him in the cage. So we place him in a temporary cage so that it calms down and starts to eat. Then later, he'll be placed, obviously, in the aviary, where he'll be cared for. Now he has food and drink. I'd like to close this very interesting episode with Joe Perici Kalashione, president of the FKNK, and Lukas Mikalev, a young member of the FKNK, thanking them for the job that you guys from the Federation do each day in defense of the Maltese hunter and hunting all over Europe. If you could just say a few closing words, and then we'll say goodbye to our viewers. Hello. First of all, uh, it was a pleasure to have you over for these um, past visits and such a manner that we could actually show through a program like Itinerario di Caccia um, the real hunting and trapping in our island. This year we have managed to regain a lost practice, a lost culture which is trapping for, for finches. Um, people like Lucas have worked very hard to make sure that these programs and the, these uh, clips are a success and what I, what I can also say is that we are being targeted because we are the smallest member state. However, we can assure everyone, especially all our co counterparts in Europe, our hunter friends in all around Europe, that we will continue to fight to defend what we believe to be our culture and our tradition. Because if we lose, everyone tends to lose. And if we retain the cultural and sustainable effort of our hunting impact, then I believe that we can succeed together. Well, these closing words seem quite appropriate to me. Malta as the defender of hunting in Europe. Good luck to Malta and good luck to all of us hunters. We'll see you next time.